Today we're going to be discussing some tips for the non-custodial parent, which is typically dad, but could also be mom. This is the non-primary parent. One of the biggest questions and concerns that I hear from clients who are non-custodial parents is the enforcement of possession. They say to me, Angel, I go up to pick up my child. My child is not where they need to be. Mother or father are refusing my visits. What can I do? While it is true that you would need to um, seek out legal assistance and, and possibly hire an attorney to enforce your possession, there are some things that you need to be doing in order to prepare for that. The first thing you want to do is show up. Believe it or not, what often happens is that mom or dad who is a non-custodial parent will stop showing up after the primary parent refuses a visit or two. Well, when you don't show up, the primary parent is no longer responsible for your lack of showing up. If you stop showing up, they have not refused the visit, you just simply didn't ask for it. So what you wanna do is you want to show up. You show up at the time and the place that is listed in the order. If mother, you want to record yourself walking up to the house, knocking on the door, and record the response. If mom or dad opens the door and says, you know, go somewhere, then that's what you want to record. If mom or dad does not answer the door at all, then that's what you want to record. You want to state your name, the time and place that you are, and you want to record that information. Another good thing to do is to go to the local McDonald's or the gas station or whatever it is that's in close proximity to that place, the address that you're supposed to pick up your child, and grab your receipt. That way you have proof that you were in the vicinity of the place that you were supposed to be to pick up your child. Another tip for the non-custodial parent, you want to be present. Again, you cannot be an active parent if you're not present. What does this mean? Quite often I find that the non-custodial parent is not involved in the school. The primary parent is the parent that the teachers know and see. So naturally, when there are issues going on with the child, the primary parent is the one who has all the information. You want to make yourself present. Show up to the school. Volunteer to be the classroom mom or dad. Go on the field trip. Volunteer to host a Christmas party. These are the kinds of things that make you an involved parent. And an extra bonus, it allows you to spend more time with your child. So now, when Mr. and Mrs. Teacher need help with something, instead of them automatically diverting to the primary parent, they may call you and say, I'm having concerns or I need help with this. That makes you more involved in your child's life. You get to sneak some extra time in, and it's a win-win for everyone. Your child gets to see you involved in their school. Another tip for the non-custodial parent, you want to make sure that you are practicing positive co-parenting in front of your child. You want to make sure that if you and the primary parent don't necessarily get, necessarily get along, you don't let the child know that. If you have comments or concerns about the way that the child is being parented in a primary home, you want to make sure that you keep those comments to yourself if they are negative. You only want to portray positive images and vibes to the child when the child is in your care. And just remember, you have such a limited amount of time with the child, you want to spend that time focused on the child rather than focused on the primary parent. Now we're going to talk about the standard possession schedule. Everyone knows what we mean when we say the standard possession schedule, right? Maybe, maybe not. When you're discussing the standard possession schedule, this is a term you'll hear often, we're talking about the regular plain vanilla schedule that the non-custodial parent typically receives. What that can schedule consists of is typically you would have Thursdays from 6 to 8, and you may have every other weekend, which is usually the first, third, and fifth Fridays from 6 p.m. until Sunday at 6 p.m. That is your typical, typical schedule for the standard possession schedule. Another thing that I often find the non-custodial parent is not exercising those Thursday visits. If seeking full custody or just being a more involved parent is a goal of yours, you want to make sure that you're getting every bit of time that is ent you're entitled to. 
you want to make sure that you show up. Go ahead and plan. Every Thursday is dinner with my child, and I'm going to go pick up my child from the other parent's home or wherever it is that I'm supposed to pick them up, and we're going to have dinner together. And that's going to be a Thursday ritual, and I'm going to make sure that I do that. It's very important. It's hard to ask the court for more time when you're not exercising the time that you're already being allotted. One other schedule that is fairly common is called the expanded standard possession schedule. This schedule is a little more favorable and works a little bit better when you have two parents who live in the same um, neighborhood or the same school district. With this schedule, the non-custodial parent would be entitled to Thursdays from the time the child is dismissed until Friday morning when school resumes. That happens every week. In addition to the Thursday, they would still also have first, third, and fifth Fridays from the time the child is dismissed from school until the time that school resumes on Monday morning. This allows the parent to have some overnight possession during the week. This gives the parent an opportunity, the non-custodial parent, an opportunity to do homework and work on projects. You have the opportunity to pick the child up from school and that way you can kind of sneak in a quick meeting with the teacher. All of these are the kinds of things that you want to be doing if you want to um, possibly, you know, seek more time, more possession time with the court. Courts love involved parents. If you are doing everything you can possibly do to be involved in your child's life, the court will most likely look very favorable upon that.